What is going on everybody? This is Chris with Patch Boy Dar, Patches for the Culture. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing some digitizing. We're gonna do auto digitizing versus manual digitizing. So let's go ahead and hop over here on the computer. What I'm gonna be digitizing, I'm gonna be doing the Akatsuki Cloud logo from Naruto. This is for all you anime fans out there, all, all of you Naruto fans out there. And for all of you fans who like to do some digitizing and embroidery. So let's go ahead and hop on Wilcom Hatch and get this design going. All right, so I already have the image loaded up that I want to use for this digitizing, uh, the Akatsuki Cloud from Naruto. We're going to do two different methods. The first method, we are going to do an auto digitizing, just to see what the auto digitizing looked like. So to auto digitize, I'm going to select the image. Over here in our toolboxes, the toolboxes will always be on the left hand side. When it comes to Wilcom Hatch, when I first started using this program, uh, I'm still using the default settings. So how everything is laid out here, you guys should be seeing the same exact layout. I haven't done any uh, tweaks or modifications to my layout. So everything should be straight out, straight out the box when you first open up the software. So over here in the toolbox section, I'm going to come down to auto digitize right here. As you guys can see, I'm going to click this and it brings down a drop down menu of all the different options they have for auto digitizing. But for this one, I want to do, um, let's say I want to do click to fill. So I'm going to click to fill. I'm going to click here on the image. Give it some time to load. The little loading sign is going. It's probably going to show up more colors than there actually are. There's technically only three colors here. You got the red, the white, and the black border. So let me go ahead and drop this down to three. Hit enter on my keyboard. There we go. So I got the three colors here. So let's go ahead and click the red. Then let's click the white. And then let's click the black. So there we go. That auto digitized that. But when we come over here, let's look at our actual uh, over here on the sequence. I'm going to click the red. In this red, you can see that... Um, it digitized, it didn't connect these shapes here. So from this red point, it didn't come over to this red point. Let me go like this. So as you can see, when it comes to stitching out the red, it's gonna have these little, it's gonna have these openings in the design. Uh, we don't want these openings, but I'll, we can always go in and tweak that if we want to. Uh, as you can see with this layer, our little uh, outline, it's more like a brownish color, but we'll switch that to black. And this red is is kind of not like a true red, so let's switch it to this red here. Uh, and the white should be all right, but we'll use the default Wilcom white. Uh, yeah, so there's that one. So now I want to do this again. So I'm going to group these layers and move it off to the side. Let me just turn my hoop off. If you don't know how to turn your hoop lines on and off, what do you do? is you come right up here on the top where it says show hoop slash settings. You will click this and it'll put the red board, the red hoop border around your design. You click it again and it'll turn it off. So we have our auto digitized version right here on top. We're going to do another version, but this time we're going to manually digitize it. To manually digitize this, what I'm going to do is come here. I'm going to minimize the auto digitize button. I'm gonna come down here to digitize. Uh, the, it gives you a lot of, it gives you a handful of options when it comes to manually digitizing. But what I'm gonna do is use digitize close shape. I'm gonna click that, and now I'm gonna start with the red, and I'm gonna just start right here, and I'm gonna do left click and right clicks. Remember, left clicks make straight lines, and right clicks make curved lines. Always keep that in mind when you're digitizing. I'm just going to follow along here, do one right there, but then I'm going to curve this way like that because I don't want to have no opening in there. And this doesn't have to be perfect, but if you at home, you want to make it perfect, definitely take your time on it. I'm just kind of speeding through it and I'm going to do a left click there in that point and I'm going to do some right clicks. I'm just keep on right clicking. Oop. 
So there's a pretty good space right here. So let me go ahead and hit the uh, backspace button on my keyboard and then make these nodes a little bit closer. There we go, that looks good. Now let's come right here, do some right clicks. I'm going to do a left click right here. And then actually let me do some more right clicks up to like right here. And then well, I'll do it right there. And now from here, I'm going to do some more right clicks. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want the red to just be like a consistent feel and not like jump around trying to make go around those curves of the white. All right, let's get through this. Let's get through this. And honestly, this is a pretty simple uh, logo design. I highly recommend you guys, uh, if you want to get some practice in, uh, go ahead and save this uh, Akatsuki Cloud logo into your computer and just practice with this one. All right, so there's the, there's the cloud. Let me turn it to red. You see it's got this weird line right here. Let me zoom out. So you can see it more when it's zoomed out. There's gonna be this weird stitch line. To get rid of that weird stitch line, we have to change our beginning and end points. So to change our beginning and end points, what I'm gonna do is like make sure your uh, layer is selected. Then we're gonna come right here up here to reshape, or the hot key for reshape is H. And right now, let's take a look. So my end point is right here, as you guys can see. This is my end point. The beginning point is right here. So this green box will always be your beginning point. And then this red, uh, this red plus sign will be your end point. So I wanna change my end point to, let's say down here. Let's put it more in the middle actually, right there. Or maybe right here. Yeah, so with this design, there's still gonna be like the weird stitch line, but at least that stitch line isn't directly in the middle. And not only that, but when you stitch this out, you technically can't really even see it anyways, but for rendering purposes, it looks a little weird. So I like to try to get that little red stitch line out of there. So now that's complete. I'm gonna come up here where it says true view. It's like the little uh, zigzag line with the eyeball. This allows us to see through our image. Um, so instead of it showing like the digital rendering effect where it shows the stitches, it'll just show us through the design. So I'm gonna do this just so we can do our, uh, the white part of the design. And I think with this, I, want, I think I wanna do some satin stitches. Yeah, I think some satin stitches would look cool, but let me take a look at how I want the satin stitches to flow. And there's two different ways you can do satin stitches. You can do a digitized clove shape and then turn it into a satin stitch, or you can uh, digitize blocks but I'm gonna just go ahead and digitize a close shape. So let's go ahead and go through this real quick. So from here, I'm gonna do a point right there. I'm gonna do a point right there. Then I'm gonna just follow this curve. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Digitizing definitely takes uh, practice, but the more practice you do, the better you'll get at this digitizing. So I'm gonna just keep following along this curve here. Cause in my head, in my head, I got an idea of how I want this to look when it comes to the satin stitches. So let's just keep going like this. Put a point right there, and I'ma follow along this curve here. And notice that I'm kind of like not exactly on the white, but I'm like in the red a little bit because I want these threads to overlap. And the reason I want it to overlap is because I don't want like stitch separation. So when it stitches out. You want it like nice and snug together and not like slight spacing in, the, in between the color changes. So let's keep going around here. Let's see. And I'm gonna want it to stop right here. Then I'm gonna curve it back up. So it's gonna do it in sections. Mm-hmm. Oop. Hand jerked a little bit. Actually, let's come back in here because that spacing is kind of far. I gotta make my nodes a little bit closer. Mm 
Yes, this is looking good, looking good. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a left click right there. Now I'm going to continue up just doing right clicks. When it comes to uh, doing custom digitizing, or not custom digitizing, but just doing manual digitizing, it's all about the left and right clicks. So there's that first part. Let me turn true view on so you guys can see what it looks like. That's what it looks like there, but I'm going to make it a satin stitch. And I'm going to have to uh, mess around with the stitch angles. But uh, let me finish up the rest of the design first and then I'll come back with the stitch angles. And notice here that my uh, beginning and end point changed again. I'm not quite sure why Wilcom Hatch does that, um, but it made the end point here. But I wanted to keep it there. Maybe I need to just lock the layer. And hopefully that'll prevent that from moving around again. But let me come in here and finish up the rest of this design. So this next one, I'm gonna just start with some right clicks right in here, this curve. And I'm not making it exact, I'm just kind of somewhat rushing through it. Cause I don't want this tutorial to take a whole hour, a whole 30 minutes. This should be just like a quick, simple it's digitizing. Also, if you guys are enjoying the video so far, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. So I'm just doing some right clicks. I'm gonna do a left click like right here, then do one like right there, and then come back this way. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing about this that if I end up not liking how the satin stitch or how my thought process is going, what I could do is select all of the layers that I'm going to make and just merge them together and it'll be one whole design. So I'm, I'm giving myself some wiggle room so that way I wouldn't have to redigitize this whole thing again. So let's keep on right clicking, right click. Right click, we're just gonna keep following along here. I'm gonna enter. This looks a little weird right here, so let me do, uh, I'm come here to reshape. Reshaping shows me all my little nodes, and I'm gonna just change this little node around. And also let me change this one. There we go. And I'm gonna make this a satin stitch. And without looking at it, I'm just gonna go right into the next one. Digitize close shape. And let me do some right clicks. The only left clicking you should be doing in this design is really at the points. Other than that, it's gonna be a bunch of right clicking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Once this is complete, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to give yourself a satin stitch border around the entire patch. Stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just make a little curve right in here. I'm going to have to come back and change this design up right here. It's kind of overlapping a little too much, but we'll get there when we get there. Mm -hmm. Just let me finish up this design. And as I said before, this is a pretty simple yet complex design. Um, I highly recommend some of you getting into digitizing to go ahead and try to digitize this image. You definitely want to make sure you get tons of practice in when it comes to digitizing. You want to learn the software. I've been using this software for a little over three years now, and I still haven't really touched all the tools that are available. I've really only just been doing uh, manual digitizing using the digitized close shape and the digitized open shape. 
but for, but for someone like me uh, making designs, that's really all I need. But this software offers a, but this, uh, but Wilcom Hatch offers tons of like different methods of making patches. Or not just patches, but making embroideries in general. Like if you wanted to do some applique patches, you can. All right, so I'm coming back. So I'm almost at the beginning of this curve here. Let me just put one more note there and hit enter. Um, let me change it to a satin stitch. I'm going to hit the select button. And now I'm going to turn true view off so I can see what it looks like. All right, all right. Uh, let me go ahead and switch this to a satin stitch. So now what I have to do is I have to come in and add uh, stitch angles so that way it doesn't give us these like weird stitching effects so I'm gonna start off with this design here over here on the left hand side in our uh, digitized section you will see this tab here that says digitize or not digitize it'll say add stitch angles with this add stitch angles button you want to go ahead and click that and now what I'm going to do is I want to do some Let's do some vertical lines and I'm gonna do a like slightly curve in like so. Let's do it like that. And then put one like this. I'm basically just changing the way that this thing is gonna be stitching when it does this satin stitch. I might have to come back in and play it with it, but we'll see. I'm gonna just hit enter so you guys can see like the effect that it's gonna have. So you see how the stitch angle changed. Now it's going like that. Maybe I wanna change this one more like this. This one like that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to add stitch angles here. So let me go ahead. You can also remove stitch angles if you need, but let me go ahead and add, add some more. Just so this thing stitches out properly. I want it to be nice and clean when it stitches. All right, that's better, that's better. Yeah. So now, as you can see, with uh, compared to the other satin stitches, this one's nice and smooth um, all the way around as to where these ones have like these weird, they'll have these weird stitching effects if I don't change that stitch angle. So now let me come up to this next one and I'm gonna add some stitch angles here. Don't wanna do too dramatic of stitch angle changes. Wanna keep it nice and subtle. Let's hit enter. Mm -hmm, yeah, that looks pretty good. What y'all think, y'all? What y'all think? Now let's do it on this final shape. Like so. Actually, let me, yeah, that should be good. Let me hit enter. I do want to come right here. I feel like this shape would have been, could have been better if it was more of an angle like that. And like that. There we go. So there's the shape of our, uh, so now we have the little uh, outline of the cloud digitized. But let me go ahead and change the colors. To change the colors, I, what I did is uh, I selected this bottom layer. Then I'm gonna hold shift on the keyboard and I'm gonna click this layer here and it's gonna select all three of those uh, sequences or all three of those objects. And I'm gonna change that to white. There we go. I'm going ahead and unlock this layer. And now from here, what I'm going to do is, actually I'm going to select all three of these and to create a quick outline around the entire design, 
what I'm going to do is come over here. I'm going to minimize, digitize. I'm going to come down here to create layouts. Now under create layouts, I'm coming down here to create outlines. For making the outline, you want to make it this uh, common outlines. So which is the middle option here. Uh, single run, I'm going to change the color to uh, hatch default, which is uh, the hatch default black color. So it made a couple different outlines, uh, but now all I got to do is just come in here and select the ones that I don't want, which are these five right here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete those. I'm going to keep this single one. Actually, I don't want this one either. Which one is it that I want? So I want this first outline right here, number nine in my sequence. So with the rest of these, I'm gonna uh, select them and delete them. And then I'm gonna come right back here. I'm gonna click this guy. And I'm gonna turn it into a satin stitch, make it black. Uh, then I'm, I think I'm gonna just scale it up a little bit just so it's not super overlapping on to the white satin stitch. Do a little bit, something like that. All right, not too bad. I could have did, uh, I could have tweaked a little bit more, but I think it looks good how it is. So let's go ahead and move our reference image right here. So going back, this is our auto digitized version of the Akatsuki Cloud logo. This one here is the manually digitized version of the Akatsuki logo. Which one do you guys like better? Which one do you think might stitch out better? So with the auto digitized version, I can come back in and uh, select this layer and make it a satin stitch. So it has that satin stitch effect. I will have to go in and change up the stitch angles. Uh, same with the uh, white aspect of the design. I can make this a satin stitch. But once again, I'm gonna have to go in there and mess around with the stitch angles just so it stitches out. Just so it looks a little cleaner when it stitches out. Uh, but I do, I do prefer my manually digitized version as I can come in, um, for instance, like right in this area, how the black is kind of overlapping on the white. I can select that uh, object and just simply move around some of these nodes, actually, and then just simply move around some of these nodes so that way it's not overlapping too much. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, and also, if you guys decided to follow along and digitize your own version, I would love to hear how it turned out in the comments below. Uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more content. Hit that notification bell so that way you know when we upload more videos. Uh, we do plan on doing a lot more digitizing videos to help some of you all, all out. Because there's no secret that a lot of you over the past couple years have gotten into embroidery, got yourself some embroidery machines, and you just want to learn how to digitize. But for those of you out there who don't want to learn on your own, definitely click the link down in the description box below. That will take you to our Etsy shop. We have a bunch of different embroidery files available. We even got this Kanye West collection. We even got this Drake collection. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. This has been Chris with Patch Boy Dar Patches for the culture. See you on the next one.